All right, guys, so pretty much this is going to be our rough uh, kind of cutout. Um, you know, we've got this hole already here uh, from the lawnmower blade where the nut goes, um, where it attaches to the deck um, and the shaft there. It's already got a, you know, a pretty defined bevel here. Um, so essentially we're just going to go off of that. It's going to essentially be just like a, a mini chopper. I'm going to use this kind of, I don't know, to cut through ribs, things like that um, on the videos. Um, so we've got plenty of handle here. Uh, we're just going to cut it out, make it, you know, fairly thick, and then we'll kind of refine it with a grinder later on once we cut it out. But um, that's essentially what we're doing now. We've got it fairly flat, and we'll uh, work on it a little bit more, uh, flatten it out, making sure it's good and level um, once we cut it out. So we'll be back whenever we get it cut out, guys. All right, guys, here we go. We have the rough cut. Yeah, I know I'm terrible with a grinder. Don't judge me. But there we go. You can kind of see it taking shape now. It's going to fit my hand. That's still hot. It's going to fit my hand really well. Um, but, yeah, now we're going to move it over to the belt grinder and get all this mess cleaned up here. Right, guys here we go fairly roughed in with the grind you can see we're still a little bit uneven right there we got to flatten that out some more we're getting ready to throw it back in the heat and get this thing ready for what eric calls final refinement but yeah i mean look at it fits my hand perfect it's gonna make a nice little chopper we're gonna bevel both sides and uh this thing's gonna be sick i can't wait till it's done y'all stick around all right, Eric, so what is this uh, nice little easy bake oven you got here? This is my uh, dual burner propane forge. And as you'll see, it puts out quite a bit of heat. So I should sit back. Holy monkey, we're burning now, baby. All you folks that do the caveman steaks, this is what you need. This will get you that sear on that bad mamma jamma. All right, guys, we're going to heat this metal up. We'll be back when we're beating it. Okay, folks, here we are. This hopefully is the last, other than setting the, the bevel on the other side and doing final polishing. Hope and the handle. Okay, never mind. I was going to say this is hopefully the last time on the belt sander, but here's what we're going to do 
Uh, I'm gonna come in and round that off where you see that line and just make it a nice pretty rounded handle and then we're gonna take some cherry wood make us a nice handle we're gonna cover up the hole and then we're gonna set a lanyard hole right in the middle of it uh, with a little brass insert or something like that so yeah hope y'all are enjoying the video be sure to stay tuned to the end hopefully you'll get to see the whole thing completed today the man says we should be able to finish it so let's go all right, Eric, so when we when we heat treat, are we heat treating the whole thing? So now we're just gonna heat treat the edge. That way we want this part hard, we want this part back here soft. That way any mishits, if you were to hit something that would damage the edge, it wouldn't actually shoot a crack all the way to the top. It would give a little bit and uh, have a little bit of rebound. So you're taking a little bit of the hardness away but not so much that you still can't use them after a good knife. So, so what's the worst thing that can happen during this process? Uh, so if we overheat it and then we quench it in water, it can crack or it can warp. Warp's not that bad. We can straighten that up with a hammer, but uh, it's a bad day if we got a crack. <laughs> Thumbs up for no cracks. So what I'm doing here is I'm letting it heat up nice and slowly. You can see the, the blue color mark straw is a good temper. That means it's soft, but we haven't even hardened it yet. But this blue, we're slowly getting up to a black. And once we get the blade up to the non-magnetic uh, temperature, we've got a magnet on a stick here. We'll uh, pull it out, let it soak for another second or two, and then push it right into the water as fast as we can without uh, Without it cracking. Without it cracking, yeah. So there it is again. We're slowly getting there. You want this process to be slow and gradual. You don't want it to be quick. A lot of people let their tools soak at a low uh, heat. Or not a low heat, but a, for blacksmithing, a low heat. Um, for 5, 10, 20, sometimes even an hour. Uh, just so they know it's, it's heated all the way through and appropriately. So we're slowly getting the red. If it's not heated all the way through, is that when you get cracks? When it's not heated all the way through, that means it won't harden appropriately. And, you know, especially if you're not getting a, like if you're using a punch, you want a punch to be hardened all the way through. So you can, you know, after the tip breaks off, because it's a punch, it's the way a punch works, um, you can just regrind it back down under a low heat and uh, you'll keep the hardness. So we're, we're getting close. So we're still magnetic back here. Almost there. We're going back in, nice and slow. Make sure to heat it up kind of evenly. And guys, I don't know what the sound quality is like on this. I hope you can hear us. The propane forge is pretty loud. Popping. It's spitting flames. All right. So if you can tell, we've taken this past that edge right there past. So we'll uh, push it back in the forge a little bit further to allow the rest of it to, to catch up. So right now we're not magnetic at all. All right. So magnetic here, not right here. So I'm going to let this soak just for a little bit. Just kind of taking it in and out. So soak, you mean in the fire? In the fire, yep. Not in the water. <laughs> Alright, so we're there. Alright, now we're gonna go right into our water. Alright. Ooh. And here's where our fingers are crossed so that there's no cracks. Check it out. And no cracks. And this uh, speckling you can see right here on the blade, that is a sign of Martin side. Martin side is just a uh, confirmation of the hardening process, and we can see that that, that took place right here. So we don't have any cracks, and we don't have any warps. So, so we did good. Good heat, we're a good winch. This is why I let people that know what they're doing help me out, guys. Be sure, like I said, go check this guy out, Eric Dot Summers. Summers Forge website is coming soon. That's why we harden it, so that when we drop it, we can just stare at it. Just grab that with your hands, bud. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> we'll be back, guys. <laughs> All right, guys, we are clamped up. 
we got it cut us a nice little piece of cherry wood and we have our uh, handle clamp 5000 this is patent pending so don't be trying to uh, steal this idea but we are clamped up letting the epoxy set there's our lanyard hole there's our front pin so yeah we'll be back in about two hours um, hopefully shaping this handle and showing you guys the final product all right so now we're going to work on the handle thin this down obviously that's not very uh, user friendly so we're going to thin this down on both sides and get a nice uh, shape we might go for a coke bottle where it tapers in here then swells back out and then back down or we could just do like a big old-fashioned uh, I forget what they call it, uh, palm swell, basically where it tapers down, but we leave the back kind of fat, that way we got a good grip on it. Um, obviously this is not going to fit my hands, this is going to fit Jason's hands. So uh, we'll go ahead and start working on her. Alright guys, so it's been like seven hours, and uh, a lot of frustration, and uh, I broke the handle, and uh, <laughs> Eric fixed it. <laughs> And, uh, but this is the final product. It is more than I uh, thought that it was going to end up being. We um, put a cherry handle on here, one rivet, one lanyard hole. Um, I don't know, what else did we do? Um, we did a Coke bottle handle profile here, kind of give him a good palm swell at the end. Um, polished the bevel, um, almost razor sharp. Um, took the wood up to about 500 grit sandpaper, uh, got all the scratches out, um, put in a lanyard hole. I think that's about it, man. So if somebody out there on the interwebs, Eric, wanted you to send them one of these or something similar to this, I mean, we used a lawnmower blade. Most, some people may not want that in yeah. their kitchen. I'm not most people, but anyway, how much would something like that cost them? Um, seven hours of work in this one, a lot of time with the forge, but with precision ground metal, it would be a little less work on my part, but the metal would be a little more expensive. Probably around about 120 bucks um, for this particular one. Now, if you wanted a nicer handle, plastic or a G10 or a micarta, you know, you can add 10, 15 dollars to that, or maybe more pinholes. You know, the customizations you can get on knobs are. Uh, limitless you know we could have done a uh, hollow grind instead of uh, a convex grind or a flat grind um, just a lot of options a lot of options man uh, this is definitely a custom order so uh, something like this I wouldn't normally keep in stock um, but you know you know that I custom made it for you and not just one of the ones that I make generically um, but yeah just message me on Instagram if you want one um, and that's, that's something it. that we talked about too is that you know, these are handmade. Anything that he does is handmade. Me personally, I never thought that I would go and search the internet for a hundred and twenty dollar knife. But you know, it was kind. Of, we talked about it today. People that use them every day, it's just like a mechanic's tools, a carpenter's. Um, you know, uh, I don't know tools they use. It's things that you need and that you use, and it's going to last. Um, it's not something that you go pick up at Walmart for twenty bucks and you have to buy another one in six weeks because it broke. Um, the cool thing about this, you know, I broke this handle, we fixed it to where you can't hardly tell it, but if something was to happen to it, I could just come back over here and make a new handle. This isn't something that I would just toss in the trash and go buy another one. Uh, this is made to last, and I, I appreciate you, man, Let me come over here, uh, show everybody what you do, and, uh, yeah, guys, y'all be sure to go check him out on Instagram. He's gonna have a website up pretty soon to where he can... Um, you can go check out an inventory, order things. He's going to have, you know, how many sets of, like, three standard. Uh, so we're going to do three standard knives, a utility knife, a uh, skinning knife, and then a bushcraft knife. Now, I, I will be doing uh, a kitchen set and kitchen knives later on. Um, we're not there yet. Uh, basically, I have to have stainless steel for that. Um, obviously, a kitchen knife's going to be around a lot of water and stuff. Where this is a chopping knife, basically, he's going to use it, wipe it off, you know, and it'll be done. Whereas kitchen knives, they get... They sit in kitchen sinks and stuff like that. So we have to invest a little more in the business, at least, to get a nicer heat treat oven. The heat treat recipes for stainless steel is uh, way more complicated than just heating it up till it's cherry red and dun dunking it in uh, water. So um, those those will be coming uh, eventually. 
but yeah, three main knives and then custom orders, of course. Um, I do have some Damascus options. Uh, but yeah, custom orders, man. Yep, so look him up on Instagram. Link's going to be down below. Uh, be sure to hit that like button, guys, if this is a video you enjoyed. And until next time, y'all stay classy. God bless, guys.